In this video, we have a lot to talk about around Fallout 76. Good things, not so good things, some things in the middle, some new content that was just recently added to the game. There's actually so much going on right now that I'm going to have to make a secondary video talking more in depth on some of the recent problems to arise. Although before that, I do want to share a message from today's video sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends is a free-to-play, turn-based RPG done right. I've been talking about Raid for quite a while on the channel at this point, and it's a mobile game I find my myself continuously going back to. It features a story mode that you can very easily jump in and out of, being able to play for just five minutes at a time or even for longer durations of an hour plus. And this can be extremely dynamic as Raid features more than 400 champions that you can collect and personally customize. Swapping out or changing around some of these champions or which items they are using gives you a lot of variability and replayability as you complete some of the levels within this game. Each of the 400 champions really has its own unique identity and unique skills to go along with that. You can go to the video description right now, click on the special links, and if you're a new player you'll get 100,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 50 gems, and 1 free champion, the Executioner. All of this treasure will be waiting for you in game just by clicking here, but do hurry up as the rewards are only relevant for the next 30 days. But if all that didn't sell you enough, even just as of late, Raid was nominated as a finalist for Google Play's Best of 2019 User's Choice Award. But looking back over at Fallout 76, earlier this this week we saw patch 16. This patch was kind of a mixed bag. It added in some really positive and good changes, both to the battle royale mode and even some changes to the adventure mode. We saw the addition of the first pre-Wastelanders hidden quest into the game. I made a full video on that that I encourage you to check out if you haven't. But also with adventure mode, it introduced a fairly game-breaking bug. In Fallout 76, you can get legendary weapons that have multiple stars, thus having multiple bonuses on them. And for a very long time now, one of these bonuses, one that would give you 250 damage resistance while reloading would actually break all the other effects on that weapon, rendering weapons with that effect that at first glance look quite powerful actually relatively useless because they were mostly broken. This had been in the game for months, and fortunately with the last update Bethesda fixed this, except in doing so it actually broke several other legendary armor effects. So following this, some of the most popular armor effects in game would just stop working after you reloaded, and this was quite significant for two reasons. One, entire characters were built around just having that effect and would be rendered fairly useless without it, but also we were about to go into a free weekend and this would be kind of a major issue to have during said free weekend. Fortunately, Bethesda was fairly quick to respond with this. In their Thursday Inside the Vault article, they described plans to revert this change, both the fix itself, but also the negative consequences that came from the fix. And just yesterday, we did see the successful reversion of that and things seem to be largely okay now. Reloading with 250 DR still breaks those other legendary effects, but all the other things that came broken with reloading are now gone. Now, of course, not quite the most ideal solution to this problem, but definitely the most suitable one, especially when you consider that a holiday break is coming up. And I would argue one of the reasons this probably came about, outside of just not enough testing after a patch is implemented, is that this was likely backported from the Wastelanders build of the game. It's been described in the past how Bethesda is basically operating on two builds. One, with all the Wastelanders content and a ton of bug fixes, and then the live version of the game that of course doesn't have that. So several notable bug fixes were implemented for the Wastelanders build, and they have to kind of port them and try and re-implement them in the older build. And I think that is how this ended up being such a catastrophe, but also it is just Bethesda, they've done stuff like this in the past. But props to them for reverting it fairly quickly. But of course, separate from that, this weekend also is a double experience and free weekend for Fallout 76, and this will be last until Monday night, but separately to go along with this, the Fallout 76 holiday event also kicked off during this. Compared to past seasonal events, this one's actually quite a bit simpler. So now, in the adventure mode of Fallout 76, sometimes, as you're fighting Scorched, you might just see a holiday or festive Scorched. These will pretty much always appear as legendary enemies, also with a unique costume and sound to go along with them. And after taking one of these down, you will be able to loot either a small, normal, or large-sized present. And after opening that present, you'll get a variety of rewards. 
And if you're having trouble finding these guys, it's literally just wherever Scorched spawn. I personally found quite a bit of success in the Morgantown locations because Scorched there are actually really low level. But separately, if you are in-game rich and you don't actually want to do this grind, you also can buy crafting materials to make these for yourself or a variant of these. Now at any of the various vendors in game under the MISC tab, you can buy holiday wrapping paper in large, medium, or small sizes, and then at a workbench craft one of the corresponding gifts. Although, an important note, these actually are different. 95% of the time they will be identical, but when it comes to taxidermy plants, these little heads you can unlock, you have a notably higher chance of unlocking one of these if you actually craft the gift yourself rather than just looting it. There's a spreadsheet that actually has all the percentages and a lot of other details around this. I will have that linked in the description down below. And then finally, you also have a 1% chance at earning one of these gifts from the Sanitron that was also added for free with this update. And these are pretty cool. There's actually a lot of really rare plans and other rewards you can get from these gifts. It definitely will have an effect on the in-game economy because things like plasma grenade plants, an item that was previously oddly rare as one of the rarest items in Fallout 76 is now earnable through this, and several other things that weren't easy to access previously, so definitely a win on Bethesda's side. Although a couple of very important disclaimers around these gifts and the plans to go along with them. Firstly, as you actually craft the handmade gifts, you could actually use the chemist perk to get two. It's literally a no-brainer to use this. You get double the items from crafting these, but separately, depending on which gift you have, you do get different things. So if you have the largest gift, you have the highest chance to earn rare loot, but sometimes you also can only get rare loot from the largest gifts. But do keep in mind, certain loot does have a level requirement to it. So if you are using this on a low level character, you may just be ineligible to earn certain things. But all of this information and even some more is in the spreadsheet. There's also two new items that you can earn from this as a part of the holiday event over Overall, although each of these are kind of simple, just camp items, nothing super significant like we've seen with past events. And something else pretty cool from Bethesda, they actually extended this event. Previously, it was going to end on December 26th, but now it'll run until December 31st, which makes a lot more sense. A lot of people only get off for the holidays on like the 24th, but definitely want to praise them for listening to the community and actually extending this event as it should be. But overall, it's kind of an interesting one. It's quite a bit different than some of the past events, a lot simpler on Bethesda's behalf, but also so it definitely can be kind of fun. You get a real dopamine rush or just that feeling of excitement when you actually see one of these then when you open the gift and want to see what you're going to get out of it. And also these gifts are tradable naturally as they should be. But actually as an aside, something else Bethesda did with this one that I thought was particularly cool. For so long now, the Scorched in Fallout 76 spawn with the same run-of-the-mill weapons. They actually made it so the Scorched that spawn for this event, the Festive Scorched, spawn with different and unique weapons. Some of them being DLC weapons, other just being vanilla weapons that you don't typically see them spawn with. It's a really minor gesture, but it does take that extra step of making these guys feel unique and special. Although conversely, on the other side of things, a recap on the Nuclear Winter holiday event. As of right now, on Nuclear Winter, they're still rerunning the Halloween event. The Halloween event ended really abruptly. As such, Bethesda decided to reintegrate that into the game, so people who are working towards rewards have another chance at actually finishing those out. And the way that event worked for Halloween was basically you had to earn 14 thousand experience in Battle Royale. And if you did so, you would unlock every tier of reward in this, with the final reward being unlocked at 14,000 experience. And it seems all but confirmed now for the holiday version of the same event, they're actually making it considerably more difficult as they're taking away that cumulative aspect. You're going to earn experience for tier one, and then that won't carry over to tier two. You'll have to start over from zero. So even though technically for each tier, the experience requirement is the same, in reality now, in total, it'll require 27,000 experience compared to the 14,000 of before, which is quite a bit higher. 14,000 experience is not easy to earn in the battle royale mode, especially if you're not winning every single game or many games. It'll definitely require quite a bit of work to get those final outfits, especially this time around requiring 27,000 experience in total. So I could see this leading to a lot of frustration or even just being such a high bar that many won't even attempt it. And it's one of those things I just don't really get. 
It's not like before everyone was complaining the event was too easy. It still does require quite a bit of effort and time spent in the battle royale mode, and I don't really see an appropriate need to double the requirements for this one. But then separately, let's talk about hacking, as this has been making a significant and notable resurgence in Fallout 76. It never really went away. Hacking with this game has always been at highs, then lows. There's also been non-hacking exploits, but these communities typically jump from one thing to the other. But as of late, several hacking tools have been created and implemented, and they are getting more and more useful, such that now in Fallout 76, things like this are possible. And yes, that is in fact the Pridwin in Fallout 76's Appalachia, the Pridwin from Fallout 4's Commonwealth. As it stands right now, it seems like any prop you could find in the files of Fallout 76 can now be implemented and placed in game, which although a fairly bad look for the game is relatively innocent, it's not like the Pridwin is game breaking, it just would be really weird to see this in game, but it seems like there also has been experimentation with creating legendaries, spawning in NPCs, which do provide themselves as being quite a bit more game breaking, and also spawning in atomic shop items, which has been possible for a while now. I'm going to have a full video going over all of this fairly in depth tomorrow because there is a lot to talk about around this and also why the timing is particularly unfortunate. But just know, yeah, if you're starting to see some of this appear in game, it's likely not because Bethesda is doing something crazy or some awesome new in-game event, but rather it's a byproduct of hacking. Patch 16 was seemingly the last major update coming to Fallout 76 in 2019. Hopefully we see some other not so major updates that are bug fixing in nature, but as such, to go along with this, we get quite a bit in the way of leaks or data mines, which do seem to suggest that one, there's going to be quite a bit in the way of additional Christmas or holiday content coming to the Atomic Shop. Some of the holiday themed microtransactions, I have to actually argue, are some of the best, still overpriced, but I think when people just get into that festive nature, a lot of people tend to make purchases around this season. Although separately, some other things. A New Year's pack certainly seems like it will be getting added, as we can see several things in a New Year's style theme, but also outside of just the typical New Year's, it looks like there may be things in the way of a Chinese New Year's or something along the Asian culture side also. Which funnily enough from this one, I actually saw in-game screenshots before I saw these online screenshots from the data mine. Because again, as I mentioned before, hackers are able to spawn in much of this already. But easily, one of the most interesting things to come out of all of this is a very interesting looking responders power armor. And this just looks awesome. Unfortunately, this does have the ATX prefix seeming to indicate that it will in fact be a microtransaction, not just a regular thing you can earn in game. But just as far as the design of this one overall, it is without a doubt one of the coolest we've seen for Fallout 76 in a long while. And probably top five overall. I really don't like this direction they head in with creating these really cool and differently designed power armors than just putting them on the atomic shop as a skin for all power armors. It's basically a skin that totally changes the look, but they without a doubt have been successful in the past and it looks like a trend they're continuing with. One other thing that I've been seeing a lot of reports of is actually with the recent update to Fallout 76, quite a few issues with Fallout First private servers. With this most recent update, they made it so you could actually have a private server that is truly private, only people you invite to your team will be added onto the server. As I talked about in my full video, this isn't a super good integration. It effectively reduces the size of the private servers to four players, and separately once you actually start the server, it doesn't seem like you can invite anybody to it. But separately, to go along with this change, several people have been reporting some oddities with private servers overall. Even without using this private function, users unable to actually join servers saying they're not on somebody's friends list, users being able to stay on private private servers when they should have been kicked off when the server leader leaves, and just all around an additional level of bugginess here. For one reason or another, this doesn't seem consistent. Like for me, I've had no problems testing this out while I was doing it for my video, but there have been several reports that make it seem like there definitely is some merit to these. Something is going on. Considering it is a microtransaction, a part of Fallout first, you have to imagine this will be fixed relatively quickly, but then considering Bethesda is approaching their holiday break, it actually could be a little bit. But then last but not least, something else to talk about, there actually is a Twitch Prime holiday bundle for Fallout 76. So if you are a Twitch Prime member and you link your Twitch Prime to your Bethesda.net account, you will start earning a variety of different things between now and January. And it is definitely nice to get some somewhat free content, but either way, that is going to pretty much wrap it up for this one. Again, I should have a fairly long video tomorrow going over this new hacking problem and really in depth on some of its issues. I could have put it in here, but it would have made it a bit more rushed and it really does deserve its own video because of how big 
big of an issue it is. But otherwise, that is a recap of some of the latest happenings and responses we've seen with Fallout 76. Until next time, I thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you all later.